Okay. okay, now today we're looking at fields. We're, we've been doing measuring, right? And actually getting out onto a field is one of the key skills. We're going to the oval. It's one of the key skills under MM2. Okay. So here's the idea. And I'll draw some rough diagrams here with me. Most of us think of a field as kind of rectangular, right? If you see a real soccer or football field, then clearly it's supposed to be a rectangle with, you know, 90 degrees, etc. Everything proper. However, in reality, right, out in the normal world, where you don't have people spending millions of dollars maintaining these things, fields are not rectangles. They are, and draw this with me as well, something like, oh, uh, here's an easy one. Okay, now we're actually going to do some drawings on this, so if you have a ruler there, that'd be handy. If you don't, you'll, you'll be able to do one later. I draw this off at an angle for a reason. So you can see it's like, yeah, it's field-ish, it's rectangular-ish, but it's really... Come in, take just go that way. Oh, as in, f oh, for me. Okay, sure. I need a That's not very useful. Now, this is worth actually writing down. Not rectangles, not rectangles, but a shape like this, and straight edges, but none of the edges being equal to each other. We would call this an irregular polygon. Irregular meaning all the sides are different lengths, and polygon meaning you have straight edges. Okay? Now, working out measurements for these kinds of things, like the perimeter and the area, things we've been looking at over the last week or so, is a bit of a challenge when you've got something that's you can't use a formula because it's not a rectangle, not a triangle, not a trapezium. What B and H and L are you going to put into this thing? So what we do is we have a particular kind of diagram that helps us break up an irregular polygon that allows us to work at the area actually quite easily. So if you have another color there, use this instead. This will be useful. If you don't have another color, that's okay. I'd like you to, if you've drawn something similar to me, I'd like you to join up this diagonal that goes from the top to the bottom. Like so. Okay? Uh, you can actually join any of the, like either of the diagonals, but if we have this all the same, then we can uh, have a similar basis. Is that okay? supposed yep. to be like irregular, not drawn? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of off at an angle. Like that. Now, what I want to do, if you recall, when we went from the formula of a rectangle, to all the other formulas we knew about, um, parallelograms, triangles, trapeziums, etc. Okay. You might recall that a trick we used over and over again was to take a shape that's weird and try and twist it into a shape that's not so weird. Right? And you remember last lesson, last two lessons, we look at area of normal figures and area of what? What was last lesson? Do you remember? Composite, Composite. Composite shapes, right? Now you have a look. I've just shown that every irregular polygon like this is a composite shape. What two shapes have I got? Triangles. Triangles. And I can deal with triangles really easily. So to make it a bit clearer, off of this vertical line that you've drawn, this diagonal rather, I'd like you to draw two perpendicular lines like that, which go to the corners that aren't connected here. Okay? So let me repeat that. From the diagonal, I'd like <laughs> you to draw a perpendicular line that'll hit these two corners which haven't been touched yet, okay? So you can see my two triangles that I've got here, the left facing one and the right facing one. Each of them I can work out the area of, right? If you think about it, I can actually, and if you've got your pencil there again, 
I can actually separate this out and show you what's going on, right? Let's draw the left-hand triangle. It's going to look like this. So you can see, if I know what that diagonal is, let's call it D for diagonal, and I can work out that perpendicular little bit that you just drew. Let's call that H1 because I'm going to have two of them. That diagonal is the base of my triangle, and H1 is the perpendicular height. It's all you need for a triangle, yeah? In exactly the same way, I've got this other triangle that's backing off here on the other side, so let's draw that. That base is still the same diagonal, right? Like those two are jammed together, same length. But I've just got a different perpendicular height. Okay? Now I'm not even going to bother with the calculations now. I just want you to be content with the fact that we can calculate them. Okay? Because we are going to make our own diagram just like this. 